Okay, in an attempt to answer everyone's questions from yesterday, the comments and the messages I received, I'm going to try and do a one-stop, one-cut video, which will just hopefully answer all that. Excuse our little uh, intruder here. Okay, so the fish tank video went up yesterday. Great response. I think it went down well. Of course, there's some questions to answer because everyone seems to have an opinion on it. So here we go from the top. I didn't blow the hand blow the glass. I bought this as a glass sculpture ready made. Uh, it's a teak root, so it's the root of the teak tree come out of the forestry uh, industry, I guess, as a waste product, and then they convert it into furniture and stuff. The molten glass, which has been blown, hand blown, a very big bolt, and then lowered down onto the root. Can we do Baba Black Sheep after? And it's lowered down onto the root whilst it's still soft, and then that's what shapes it to the root. So no, to answer some of the messages, I didn't look around endless amounts of driftwood and glass to find this particular match. Mummy's back. Mummy's back. Yay. Okay, we're back in. I don't know if this will be a one take wonder, is it? Okay, so uh, I found it in a, on a market stall. There was a kind of variety of um, craft things from all over the world. These, I think, are Indonesian, or at least um, the video, the only video I found really online of how they're made uh, appeared to be that. So um, I'm going to link to that video below. I didn't really want to steal anyone else's footage, but if you want to see, I think they're doing much smaller ones, but you can see, get the idea of how they do it. Uh, I had to do a little bit of tweaking, cut the back of it to fit the windowsill or the, the shelf, really. Uh, I had to then plane and use a router to flatten off the bottom so there was no rock uh, in the, uh, in, you know, when it sat on the sill. I didn't want it to fall off, of course, because it's heavy and with the kids around. So it's also screwed with some big 100mm screws down into that chunky pine, which is again bolted with six concrete bolts down into the stonework. So it's safe, it's not going anywhere. The nature of the bowl. It won't come off, it would have to be lifted up kind of about 150 mil before it can even come off the front. So the whole thing is, is nice and safe. Um, as far as the glass, the glass is just a recycled glass that they use. I think it's old window paint and stuff, so it's probably not aquarium quality glass. And it's got little air bubbles in it, but it's just part of the charm of it. So that's how we obtained it. I then needed to do a few little changes and I built the lid, of course. Uh, I'm gonna do that in a separate video because that was a bit more of a woodworking type thing. Um, but then I had to sort out some uh, filters and heater and some lighting and things to go in there. So the glass is not stuck to the roots. I tried to do that short video so that it was just a kind of highlights video and I could be a bit more arty with the filming, but uh, there's a few things that I needed to explain. So I took the glass, the glass when it's set, sat onto the root when it's really hot actually sets fire to the wood and a lot of the bits that impression into the glass to start with actually burn and fall, fall away. So you end up with unsupported areas of glass uh, just by a few mil. So when I sat it on there I could see that it's actually all pivoting on two points. Um, so what I did is I turned it upside down put some clear silicon into all the sort of um, grooves and notches and then when that silicon had kind of skinned over after an hour and a half or so I then started to lower it on slowly so the silicon wasn't sticking to the wood and I was just kind of lowering it up and down until I could see that almost like when you're doing an impression for a dentist I could see that all the bits had pushed into the silicon so I knew it's going to be fully supported and took it off to let it cure overnight and then when it sat down everywhere was touching and everywhere was cushioned and I just felt a little bit more um, confident that that was going to be safe and uh, and the best way to go because you know it's not a, ma a huge amount of water but it's still quite weighty. So we let the tank sit for about six days between filling and the fish going in. Bobby, I should refer to him now. Um, and that's just to make sure all the levels kind of evened out and I was testing the water every few days uh, and I was kind of putting a little bit of food in there and just getting all the filters uh, and everything working and circulating so it was all kind of balanced. It's not a windowsill, a lot of people said about algae and moss growing because it's right by a window, what was I thinking? Well actually that window's got um, this much stone the other side of it. Uh, which was blocked up about 60 years ago so we just put a mirror in there as a feature for this room 
Now, mirrors can cause a bit of stress to the fish because they think it's another fish, so um, kind of monitoring that if needs be, I might just put some sort of decorative um, fabric or card or whatever on that lower pane, uh, but it doesn't seem to be an issue at the moment. Okay, to explain the choice of fish, I'll try to do it up here. Hopefully this air bubbles aren't making too much noise. So the reason, some people said you should get more fish in there, keep them company. The fish we went for is known as the Siamese fighting fish or better beta fish. Um, and, he, and the males are notoriously kind of territorial. So they usually, it's recommended that they're kept um, in solitary tanks. So while that might, might seem a little bit odd, the advice is that they're either kept on their own or with caution you can add certain fish. Um, so that's the route we went with him. Uh, of course he needed a heater and a filter and all that sort of stuff. A lot of people would just say, oh just put some goldfish in there, but the goldfish are actually really dirty, filthy fish to keep and really they need a bigger tank, much bigger tank because they want to grow to this sort of size and I didn't really want to stunt the growth of them or anything like that. So that's the advice I got from various places was to go this route. The tank itself is about 24 litres, so that's five gallons, and uh, sorry, six gallons, uh, or US gallons, I think. Um, so the, the tank size was suitable for a better fish, or beta fish. So hopefully th th that's not going to be an issue. Now, of course, the one thing with this fish is because they a bit of confrontation with each other. If he sees his reflection too much in this window, uh, in this uh, mirror pane at the back, we might need to kind of change that, but I don't think he has spotted himself quite yet. And uh, the light in the top was uh, uh, like an underwater light, which I've used, so it's nice and sealed. Um, and it's just one of those sort of RGB LED ones. It could be brighter and it's certainly not enough to support the plant life in there so the plants will probably be swapped out uh, to either a very low light basic fern or something or some artificial ones. Um, apart from that uh, the, the setup's really basic there's a under gravel filter in there which is the only thing really thing that would sit in here discreetly. There is a little auto um, thermostat um, heater element in there which keeps it at a constant 25 degrees and I've got a tiny cheap LED um, or LCD thermometer in there so that's digital and I can check that and it sits pretty much at 25.1 drops down to about 24.8 so it's, it's pretty much bang on and it's certainly not going to fluctuate too much that helps that's probably helped by the fact that the glass is about 10 mil thick in areas and obviously it's thinner in others, so uh, so it seems to be pretty stable and working fine. Um, other than that, the the air bubbles are going in there through the air stone at the bottom, and then when they get to the top here, there this air at the top, the way the way I saw it anyway, is constantly being replenished by fresh air coming in, and um, this species of fish have a an organ. I think it was called a labyrinth organ, which allows them to breathe the air at the top rather than just the water through their gills. So that's why you see them go up to the top quite a lot. And the benefit is with that, if we're not relying on oxygen being, you know, loads of oxygen being in the water, which hopefully there should be anyway, but they can go up to the top and breathe up there. So from all the advice I've kind of had, this is the fish we went for. Now as far as putting any other fish in there, I think for the tank size it's probably a bit too small to start putting other fish in there. Um, although that you can get very small tiny tropical fish that would look great in there, they really need to be kept in sort of six or more of each of their own species and at that point you end up needing a bigger tank anyway. So we could try some of those little kind of uh, ornamental shrimps and snails and stuff um, just to give it a little bit more uh, life in there but we'll, we'll leave it as he is for now and just let the kind of levels all balance out and just keep checking the water. So hopefully this has answered most of the questions on the last video. If you haven't seen that last video I'll link to it at the end of this one. Um, it was something a little bit different and I think it's worked out you know well and it's a nice little talking point for visitors 
but you know uh, there was loads of uh, research needed to be done into it so hopefully I haven't made any mistakes as far as the setup goes and um, so well, there'll be one more video in this in that I'm just going to show how I built that lid because that kind of worked out quite nicely uh, and then we'll be back into the full flow of the renovation videos uh, as far as the video from the last one I just did a really simple one as you saw with just music no talking I just thought I'd do that for a change I've done a few of them in the past uh, some people say they prefer to be you know talk through what I'm doing but actually there wasn't masses to talk through at that point um, and it just I think it suited that style of video but I'll be keen to hear what you think about those styles of videos um, yeah of course it was an indoor project so I could use my pro cameras rather than using my YouTube cameras so that's why it was probably a little bit more uh, of a high quality video so we'll be back to the GoPros and the cheap SLRs soon but um, you know bear with us there's plenty coming and I think that's it so thanks for watching remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you next time mm -hmm.